Some time ago, a homemade barge showed up on our local river here in town. People talked about it, but no one seemed to know the story behind it. Well, the other day, I got a text from a friend that the barge returned, and we headed down to the river. We used the megaphone to reach out, just hoping for some kind of interaction, and uh, that's when we met Ken. He agreed to have us return a few hours later. He'd sit down with us, tell us his story, give us a little tour of his vessel. house I, I i owned the property uh, yeah. that the wrecking yard was on and uh, i started it oh i don't know back in the late 70s early 80s something like that and anyway when japan's economy went there went the price of scrap metal on the west coast and about half of my income and i struggled through and waited for it to come up and waited for it to come up and 15 years later china started buying it and went up and just in time for but i'd already i'd already Walked away from the wrecking yard by then because I just couldn't keep up the payments. Yeah. It, uh, I think it sold in, in well, I heard it in 2004 for 4.4 million, something like that. I was paying 135,000. <laughs> you, you were? I was, that's what I was paying for it. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, well, that's life. And how many? <laughs> exactly, that's life. Shit happens as, 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 while you're planning your life. Yeah. Um, our life happens while you're planning or making plans, whatever those sayings are. <laughs> and you know, during this time, I'd become disabled and 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 uh, retired and get the big seven hundred dollars a month. And so that's I can afford the three hundred, but uh, normal rent, no, I can't afford that. And uh, there's, you know, I'm on uh, things where I'm I qualify for different things, and I was they assured me I was going to be living in Smith Towers in Vancouver for $200 a month, utilities, everything included. So that was pretty good. Hmm. And then the last minute it all fell through and they wanted me to go to a shelter. <laughs> yeah. All I had was an inflatable boat, right? And, and, and went back and slept in it, it was really comfortable. And uh, so I was kind of looking for a situation kind of like that and I, and I ran across Peak and Ferry. I, I knew nothing about Peak and Ferry, never heard of it before. No campground down here. And uh, it had a sign where you could uh, park your car for five dollars a day or one hundred and thirty-five dollars a year. And then under that, there was another sign that said, "Enjoy your freedom." So <laughs> that's me all over. <laughs> that's great. But yeah, it turned out that the, the one hundred thirty-five dollars a year was for the boaters that came in. The fishermen, you know, they parked their boat, they parked their trailer there, take the boat out, park the truck and trailers there, and then they they come back and get it and take it all home. But it's not what I, I know. Never lived on a river before. Wasn't my interpretation. I didn't know nothing about that. Woo hey, yeah, like, just pedal and I'll take care of the rudder here and see. Hopefully it'll help. <laughs> We're doing the barge cribs. Are you? Yeah. Well, I love this man. I I nicknamed him Frog Man. I first met him when he first lived on this river in two little green boats and he had flippers on his hands, he was laying on his stomach and so I know his name is Ken but forever he'll be frog man to me. That's great. Very cool guy. Yeah, like the so coolest fun. guy. Yeah, he's my best river friend out here. You can never go on the river without saying hi to Ken. Frog man. Like he's living his dream. Like we can't, we can't relate to his dream, but he's happy. Well, a little bit. I think it's rad. That's why I came down here. So. Yeah. And uh, last last winter, I gave him my number. I said, if it gets too terrible, I've got a barn you can crash in to get off the water. So hopefully, you still have that number in your pocket. Thank you. Awesome. See you Bye. later. Uh -huh. This is the front of your vessel. This is the front. Those are solar powered lights, they come on when it gets dark, so people don't run into me. But hopefully they don't. <laughs> you just had some rigid foam and uh, PVC construction here. Uh-huh. These are genuine bamboo poles that I push away from the shore in. Move myself around when I, when I can reach the bottom. Right on. Sometimes I have to actually pull it with this. 
Oh, you need the paddle? Or you need to figure it out? Oh, we're just kind of twisting and turning, so you have to, I guess, turn the camera as we turn or something. And this is the backyard of the garden. The main part, the main part of the garden. There. And the bicycle with the motor. Oh, yeah. And stuff just kind of scattered around. The whole bunch of things up today. Have a place to do anywhere important yet. <laughs> Another solar panel. So how many, uh, like, what kind of, do we need to get back on there and paddle into it? Yeah. What kind of uh, wattage are you putting? Well, that, that panel puts out 45 and then the, the solar shingle on top there puts out 136 watts. So you've got, uh, we won't go on there, but you've got solar refrigerator. Yeah. Um, propane heat. Propane heat, okay. Yeah. Got electric guitar. The tuper, obviously, is you use the tuper. And I use the tuper. And then you use these uh, little uh, baskets that look like... Oh, well, yeah. actually those are just little baskets that they were cheap at the dollar store. Okay, so now people are going to go to the dollar store and they're going to be wiped out. No more cheap baskets. <laughs> no more cheap baskets. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, baby. People are going to replicate this because you know what? You don't. You don't. You don't need water. You just dip them. Yeah, I just use the water that's in here. I don't. I don't use the sterile water, or I don't even bother filtering it. I just use this water, and, and I add the hydroponic. There's probably stuff nutrients in the water. Yeah, both good and bad, I would guess. <laughs> some have bent and, and broken. I lost six that way because of the wind, and, and, and some have just fall overboard, go sailing down, and usually somebody brings them back. <laughs> what do we got here? We got uh, your bicycle, you got your propane, heater. Yeah. Little drawers in there that got clothes and whatever necessities. Some clothes hang. And it's got a light in there. Of course, I can turn it on. Hey, well, uh, nothing, nothing special. Just nothing special. Uh, You're just doing it. Just doing it, and on the river. And I guess that's the only special thing about it. <laughs> Dude, everyone floats by and they see this. Come here, look at this. The weed bar. I have, I have met a lot of people out here, and I've. I probably have more friends now than I did when I was working. I had business acquaintances then. Now I have really true friends. Yeah. And it's, and it's, it's great. Here. We uh, we talked about going on the vessel, but um, it's not. See, Ken knows where to step, and I don't. And uh, I have I have somewhat of an expensive camera. I mean, <laughs> you definitely don't want to drop it. I drop yeah. many things myself. Thanks for the tour. It's awesome. I'll get on the pedals here. Thanks for responding this morning when I came megaphone and phone and I. Uh, at first I thought it was the police. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> You in the bar down there. What do I do now? God dang it. So Ken called me yesterday and he had a little incident on the raft with the weather. We had a big storm, so uh, he needs some help and I'm trying to find him. So he said he's out here and uh, we're gonna go pick him up and see what happened to his raft. Good morning. Yeah, so we can load that thing in here. Yeah. yeah. Rain jacket and flannel. Yeah, I could use one of them. Get a rain jacket? Yeah. You can have that one then. Oh, hey, that would be great if you yep. don't yep. You you go badly. It, when the storm hit, it was. My my main flotation was tied alongside of me. I was no longer on top of it. Oh. Uh, so I was about had it back up and uh, then the flood hit and uh, um, both front and back were anchored there was a, somehow a stump got in there right in the middle and and the current pushing on both sides it, it when I stepped out on it I heard a bad noise and I kind of thought something was giving away and I stepped out on it and it gave way mm. so I kind of went down and Pull myself back up. And, oh, you're you know, in the water? Yeah, waist deep type thing, you know. Yeah. It was cold. Yeah. <laughs> Boots filled. <laughs> yeah, the river's swole. And 
and rescue dump me off wet and cold. Oh yeah. Said you're on your own at three in the morning. You had rescue? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the, the first time, this is the second time I've had to call them. The first time they were real nice, set me up in the motel room, and gave me a little money for breakfast. And... They didn't do that. <laughs> and the guy said, well, what are, you know, the guy said, what are you expecting us to do? And, and you know, I wasn't going to say, well, you know, hey, it'd be nice if you put me in the hotel room and give me some money for breakfast. But, you know, I mean, like, a, take me to a police jail or something, you know, but evidently the center don't even have the equivalent of Mayberry, so <laughs> Otis can't walk in and go to sleep. <laughs> but you were soaked, huh? and then they just left you there. Yeah. How'd you warm up? Well, it left me at, at uh, the, the Arco, you know, so I, I was had access to coffee. Sweet. So we're going today to see what's left. Yeah. Okay, but you tied it all up and left it? Well, I yeah, well, I left it as it was, uh, so I don't know what, you know, the current has probably shifted since then. I don't know, you know, some things have floated off of the raft. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what I'm going to see. I hope I know what I'm talking about. I don't know where exactly your boat is, so. Look familiar? I haven't been up this far. Didn't look familiar? Not really, but I'm guessing we're more down that Yeah, way. we'll keep going. I've just given up on trying to keep my feet dry in the wetlands. I just gave up. Might as well just take my pants off. I'll say this water's pretty cold now. This Hello. is uh, Bryce, Hi, Bryce. Nice photographer. That's is it Don? No, I'm Eric. No, this, this Eric. is Eric. Nice to meet you. He's Eric. from the actually from the other side of the river. I didn't expect to see him over here, but <laughs> yeah, no, we ride all over. Oh, okay. Right on. Did you see us? We're not familiar ground? with the right yeah. trail. We took the long way around through Ridgefield. <laughs> did you? Yeah. We we, uh, we came from Pioneer uh, Cemetery. No, you did? Oh yeah. Did you get here? Uh -huh. We didn't know where this thing was, oh, no, so cool. I drove. You, you, uh, <laughs> Solar panels are still here. And there's some more of your lattice down there. And that's under the blue type is, is my wood fireplace. <laughs> This stump, when I left, the water was here. <laughs> it's the one that I wrapped around and kind of broke in half. So we got another section down here somewhere. This ain't all of it. <sighs> I'm hoping I still got my refrigerator somewhere. Oh, I'm not seeing them. Get it right on the edge there. Good deal. Has a barrel on it. <laughs> Amazing. So you're gonna rebuild? What else can I do? Well, the plan is to uh, sit down and make a plan. <laughs> well, let me check everything, make sure everything. Your cell phone and make everything. Make sure I there. still have a cell phone. Yep, that's a good idea. And medication and blah, blah, blah. Yep. So we came and got Frogman, and uh, we had to leave for a little bit. And this is what we returned to. Flood levels are pretty high. 
but his raft's still there. Get along with you I try to show you that I love you more